internet don't fail me now. We were doing so good this morning. All right. And how you doing there? Okay, cool. We're good. Hello again. So I'm only going to stream again for about 45 minutes. This will be a shorter one. Um, I'll have to start dinner. I got all that great produce from the farmer's market. Time to put it to some use. Let's just refresh this. So, uh, I'm brain farting out right now. I will show you the finished horns. Uh, so it is surprising that it's no longer storming outside. Um, but there was a little pocket and I was able to go outside and get these sprayed. What I use to finish all of my uh, crop pieces is a polyurethane spray. Maybe it's just because I did a lot of woodworking um, in my younger years, but there's just something about the word polyurethane that st strikes the chord in my heart. So I use polyurethane by Minwax. It is strong. Uh, with the, I used this stuff on the uh, uh, bracers, there we go, for talon, and I haven't scuffed them yet. There's no wood, oh, I have not scuffed them yet. So here are my finished horns. I say horns because I'm not talking about the whole entire dre uh, headdress. So they have been sprayed a couple times, both front and back. We airbrushed these puppies this morning. This is supposed to be a semi-gloss. Um, the reason I wanted semi-gloss and not matte finish is because I do want them to be, I mean, showy, if you will, at that point. I want people to take notice of them, so I'm hoping that that little bit of glitz and glam and shine, hi, mocap, nice to see you, uh, will kind of draw some people's attention, especially since it's going to be outside. I use the Minwax polyurethane spray because if it rains, I don't want to have to worry about these. Uh, with the, the materials that I used and there being paper underneath it all, I provided ample coats of the polyurethane so I shouldn't run into any problems. I'm just going to set these. Oh, I guess it's time before I set them aside to peel off the don't get me painty or gross uh, backing. So like I said, this will be a, a smaller, a shorter uh, stream. We st I streamed this morning for almost four hours, so I just need a nap. Uh, when the rain let up, I quickly ran to the farmer's market. Yes, even in the city they have a farmer's market. I like to support local farmers um, in the area. So I don't need this anymore. Here's the elastic band that I was talking to you about. So it secures it onto my head. Actually, I'll put them on for you. So I can loosen them up a bit. And then I can, oh, sorry, bun. And it, they really do just sit in place. I'm not sure if I can back up a little bit so you guys can get more of the, the look. They're glorious. Um, they're not going anywhere. I can lean forward. I can lean back. They're, I mean, they're there. And that's with the headband and everything on underneath them. So, thank you, Lightning Cosplay, for uh, the tutorial book. I used her headdress concept that has the headband out of Warbla, and then the elastic and Velcro on the back to secure it. So, as I while I've got this open, I'm going to put on. So this here, this strap that I have here is going to be where all the dreadlocks are sewn into. I made it two ply because we're going to close off and seal and finish all the ends. So once I have sewn them all on, I'm going to then glue the two nylon straps together, stitch along the side, the perimeter of it, that way it's encased and it's secure and I don't have to worry about the knots rubbing against my head 
any glue with extreme heats rubbing into my hair. I don't have to worry about my hair or pins that I'm wearing undoing any of the knots that I uh, stitch in there. So the Velcro fits right underneath it. And then, so this actually will go up and over the head. I made a mark of where it's going to end and so I've got my zigzag stitch here that's connecting my nylon to my elastic. This elastic is going to wrap around the perimeter of the headdress. Why elastic? I've got elastic on both the top or sorry the front where my forehead is as well as the back because depending on if I wear this with a wig uh, if somebody buys this off of me on Saturday and has a you know longer head than mine, I have a pretty large dome. Just throwing that one out there. In the front, it's got, and in the back, it's got elastic, so it'll give to different uh, head sizes. But this will go here. It'll wrap around, and then I will stitch it to this end here. But what I have to figure out first are a couple things. I have to start sewing the dreadlocks on and it's going to be pain in the butt. Again, there's 101 of these bad guys. Um, so before I figure out and stitch this on here permanently, I've got to get a lot of dreadlocks sewn on. So we are going to do some trial and errors. I'm going to set this up like I would if I was going to I wish I could just take his head off. You can kind of see. I'll move this more into frame. So I've got the back here. What I want to do is I want to, as I keep reiterating, create that mohawk look. I know that whatever I put toward the center of this nylon is going to have to be the smaller pieces. Then whatever is on the edges will have to be the longer uh, reason being is it's not going to stick straight up. It's going to kind of fountain off the sides. Uh, let's see if I can simulate this with these. So if I were to put this here, it's going to fountain off the sides. Uh, so I really want things to look sticky and spiky up. So with these smaller ones lining the front, that will give the aesthetics that, oh, it's supposed to be a mohawk, even if it has rained and the wool has started to slouch down the sides. Yeah, that's gonna be so cool. I already did this once and I can't believe I have to do it again. Uh, I have to put them in size order. So here are my plans for the headdress, the horn covers. Now you can kind of see what the horn covers look like. Uh, this headdress will come up and around. We had sewn a section of it because that's where this nylon is going to hide. These back pieces here will actually tuck underneath the nylon and this will be the flap that's over top of the nylon with the dreadlocks. The skull itself sits right between them, kind of up a little bit. And it cover and the bottom headband extends out just a little bit past it, almost like the brim of a hat if you will. And then my jawbones plan on hanging down on either side, real creepy like. Woohoo. So we're gonna see how much sorting of this I can get done before I have to start cooking dinner. I went to the farmer's market today and picked up some wonderful nectarines and broccoli because it was raining not a lot of people had uh, visited them yet and I'm glad I swiped up some some good stuff because they closed a half an hour ago so I swiped up some great produce before other people were able to venture out when the rain stopped that's why they made umbrellas right so that you can walk around in the rain Ooh, I'm gonna 
gonna try to do this as quick as possible. I'm gonna make no promises. This part sucks. Freaking sucks. However, I need to know which pieces are smaller. These are my smallest pieces. I know that for sure. So I can just set those out and out of the way. I tried to fix my camera angle too, so sorry if you can see my white legs below. I have a tendency to want to work in my lap. Um, you guys couldn't see what was going on in my lap. So, oops, you'll live. <sighs> so these are various thicknesses. I did not video stream how I made these. I powered through a lot of Netflix when I was making all of these, so um, copyrighted material. Sorry, couldn't share. But I can tell you about the process. So if you want to make your own dreadlocks and you are in the same mindset that I was for this project, my last Seder cosplay, I had uh, roving wool which is like felting wool, where you see people take the needles to it and they poke it a lot and it starts to compact and press down. You can make leaves and flowers out of it. You can take that roofing wool and you can soak it in, and I just use my regular bar of Olay, um, like body soap, in a container of warm water. And when I say warm, I mean hot water. And I put the large strips inside the hot water, let them soak and submerge in the soapy soapy water mixture. And then I would take them out and on a paper towel you push down hard and you roll them together. That takes a lot of time. Um, and it's a lot more expensive, or it's a more expensive option than this one. So since this cosplay isn't going to be going in any competitions and it was more or less just something fun that I wanted to put together for the Michigan Renaissance Festival, uh, which is opening this weekend, I decided just to use yarn. So still wool, but a different form of wool. Uh, so I uh, grew up just on the outskirts of Pontiac, and I had some wonderful friends and worked in some great places that uh, showed and taught me different aspects of making dreads and how I was taught to do home dreads like if I was sitting at home and to make dreads was with yarn uh, so you would section off different pieces of your hair and you would braid your hair in with yarn and you didn't have to braid all the way through the yarn even though I since there was no hair in these dreads the middle the center braid is braided all the way through to the bottom then what you would do is you would take yarn, so whether it was one piece of yarn, if it was one piece of yarn, you were going to be there for hours, or five, six pieces of yarn at a time, and you make sure they lay flat all side by side, and you start wrapping the hair and your, you know, the braid of wool or yarn like I have did with these. And then when you get to the end, you can tie them off. With these guys, I just dunk them in some glue. And so that is how I made these. Granted, they're not the prettiest, definitely not winning any fashion show awards with these ones, but they work with my wasteland look because the reason I chose dreadlocks for this is if I was, um, you know, in the desert and had not the best source of washing oneself, my hair would start to roll and mat together just like it kind of does after three days of not washing it now. Uh, and so I wanted the dread looks. Wanted the dreadlock. Uh, the colors, uh, this light like taupe almost brown goes and matches with my actual costume. The blacks and grays as well as matching with my costume, they match with the actual horns. Hmm. And they're still kind of tacky, so I gotta be careful when I set them down. Alright. 
So what I'm doing now is I'm laying them all out in length. They may not be exact or perfect, but this is giving me an idea of which ones I'm going to set down the center and which ones I'm going to toss um, along the sides that are longer. I might even put some smaller ones on the sides as well to help prop up some of the big guys. all that rain earlier today it got really muggy outside really muggy Almost, as this pile gets smaller, the scale gets longer. And if I apply these with little rhyme or reason, I believe it'll look more natural, um, but I'm not sure if I can work on a whim that well. I usually like to plan everything out. Hence why I'm laying all these out now. So some of them are pretty stiff as is. Uh, like this one I can stick out and it'll keep its shape, but this one's not so much. So this could be a, a big trial and error process. Here's hoping things go well. Need to rotate this. I've got the DuckTales theme song stuck in my head. With dinner, I'll end up watching more fairy tale. I really dig that anime. Don't tell me, don't spoil it and tell me what happens at the end. I have never seen the season or series all the way through. I'm loving, though, Urza. Urza Scarlet. You can tell that I, uh, when I made these, I made them in groups of length. So some of them are the exact same length multiple times, and others are just eclectic. Those are the pins I'm going to use. So again, just laying out my wool dreadlocks. I've got to lay them out by length before I start stitching them together. I'm going to sew them onto the nylon of my headdress. So here's the headdress for people if they want to see again. They're coming in late to the stream. It's sealed with a uh, polyurethane spray. Multiple coats to protect it, keep it safe. Um, I'm not the uh, nicest individual when handling my own things. 
I'm cautious with other people's stuff, but with my own, I'm a little too rough. So it's, it's always good to make sure I've sprayed an extra coat of protection onto it. So close. A lot of long gray ones. You can see this section just all the same length. I knew I had at least two of those really super long ones. All right. There's that. So how I'm going to start this is I have um, yarn needles. I'm hoping that these are going to be big enough. Uh, let's see here. Which one's the pointiest of them? This guy. So you can go to the store and get needles that were meant just for yarn. So here's what this needle looks like. I'm not sure actually if you can see it, so let's go this route. You can tell that it's smaller uh, than normal, and it also has a larger um, eyelet or whatever for you to thread the wool through, or the yarn through. On the ends of all of these, I made a loop. One, it was easier to keep them all intact like this. Also, it's going to be easier now to stitch these on because I'll just use this same piece of yarn that's already attached to them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find the center and I'm going to do some line drawing and measuring. That way it all comes together nice and smoothly. Even though I'm not, I'm going to try to be a more organic with which colors I pick, I do want them to follow down the same line. So I'm going to get some chalk out get some regular thread just in case as well. And I'm going to find the halfway point. So let's get my clear ruler. So there's my middle point. I'm not going to put any on the elastic. I probably won't even be going all the way up, to be honest. But I will be going all the way down and then some. So this line actually should extend past. And then let's see where it should stop. That ends there, and this comes up here. Looks like it'll be there that I stop stitching dreads. lay a couple out and pin them in place just to make sure that I've got the correct mindset when going to this. I've never done this before, so we're just we're trying trial and error together. Trial and error together. So make sure I'm not working in my lap like I was trying to do earlier.
if this was on my head, the longer one should go in the back and drape down to cover anything. So we'll save those. We should work from the center and then work out from there. That would make sense. It looks like I'm going to have to stitch this onto the actual headdress before I start sewing the dreads, and that's what I was I was afraid of. Um, the reason I say that is because once I start stitching them here, I'm not going to be able to part them and put them through my sewing machine. Gosh darn. Oops, careful. So let's see here. Let's move that there. That will come down and under. I might end up having to hand stitch this anyways. Ooh. Oh, no, I won't have to. I can just undo the other end and then flip it over in the sewing machine that way. That'll work. So if I undo this end and take it off, I've got to make sure that I put the elastic back on though because with all this yarn around, it's going to snag on something. Then I can come over and do it. Alright. This is going to be a pain in the butt. So I'm pinning in place the nylon straps, that way I know where to sew and they won't move on me. to cut this. Ugh, I just did. Okay. We're going to fray check the end that I just cut. That way when I put it away in my stuff, it doesn't fray all over the place and cause problems later on. However, with the one that I have here, I have a lighter around here somewhere. I'm going to just burn it. their hands, just press it together. There, that way I can stitch it and I'll stitch closed both the elastic below and the nylon on top. Just throw some thread check down there just to be safe. Last thing I want is to be pulling on pieces of elastic and having them unravel below my head. Nina out again. Chicago 7. Anybody's wondering what machine I use? Uh, 
Thank you, Bernina. This is the sewing machine that I won from the American Sewing Expo's costume contest. It's a prize that has definitely been useful in more ways than one. There. I had a shadow on my face. Now, what I'm going to try to do, without botching anything, is I'm going to try to stitch this guy by turning it around and pulling it on the other side through my sewing machine over here. And will it fit? It doesn't have a choice. I almost wish it was a left-handed sewing machine, like where the sewing part was on the other side. Do they make sewing machines like that? Move the air compressor. I don't want my horns to nick anything. More space. They yell. Oof. That does not sound good. So everything's still really tacky. And when I hit them against things, that's no good. Um. <sighs> Sorry, the sewing machine's gonna have to block the area for a minute. Any little bit helps. I'm gonna take this off. Hmm. It's too bad. There is just. This is just not gonna work. You know, it'd be great. I'll just hand sew that piece together. That's exactly what I wanted to do. Save time? Psh, nah. Why'd be able to put it in a sewing machine? Bummer. Let's just push it out of the way for now. I don't want to deal with it. I don't even want to look at you. So here's the thread, here are my needles, I'm gonna do my own zigzag stitch over it. Because everybody knows hand sewing is fun. My current project, if you guys are wondering, is Gosetsu. So next week we'll be back on track with Final Fantasy XIV Online with Gosetsu build. This was a quick, was it? This was supposed to be a quick build uh, for the Michigan Renaissance Festival, which I thought I was going to have done last week, but obviously that's not the case. So yeah, just a. Uh, Doing a light zigzag stitch. When I say light, I've got to go over and back and over quite a few times. Uh, kind of boring. Sorry, viewers. I'm just going to pull that pin out. It's already in the way. So 
I'm just trying to make sure I stay on the same line of the nylon threading. I'm going to have to go back um, over this a couple times just to really make sure that this is stitched down. So I'm just hand stitching the headdress. Sorry if I keep looking at the, the time, the clock, it's already 7. <sighs> I'm not sure what I'll make for dinner. I've got ground beef in the fridge. Picked up some broccoli. I want to save the sweet potatoes for this weekend. We have steak. Anybody got any ideas? Ground sirloin. What should I make? Go. Hmm. Guess I should also say we don't eat carbs. Like no pastas. keep the cosplay shape, if you will. I mean, alright, I guess I could eat pasta, but I choose to drink, to drink my carbs, and wine is just more important. Um, so if somebody said, you could either have wine or pasta for the rest of your life, but you only get one, I chose wine. Yep, definitely would chose the wine. I'm just going back and forth. I made it all the way down. Now I'm going to come back. Before I run out of thread, I'm going to uh, figure out which side's my back side. Which is this side. And I'm going to tie knot. You know what? I always like to pull my thread through the other side before I cut. I just ran out of thread, so I'm going to thread my needle again and continue. Because I couldn't get this done with a sewing machine, I'm hand stitching it.
So all these hand stitchings too will get covered up with dreadlocks. No one will see this. I'm just bummed that it couldn't be cleaner. Thanks to everybody that showed up this morning to this morning stream. We had some good conversation with the airbrush gun going on in the background. side. stitching down. Bam. Oh, just kidding. Said that too prematurely. No, I'm done. Screw it. Cut it. Bam. Uh, I've got some really long needles that I can use with the yarn if this one doesn't poke through the nylon. Nope, we'll be fine. I just just dried it. Folks, we're just fine. Nope, I need that. So now let's slide this on. Give it a test. I think I've tried this headdress on more times than I've tried on costumes when I'm making them. I have a tendency to not try on cosplays at all until uh, I'm done with crafting them. Worth the head. So it fits on there just as I expected it to. Cool. What this also does is it acts as extra support too for my actual head so it's not going to like slide down my forehead or down the, the back side of my head, knock on wood. But it looks like I wiped off that line that I drew in chalk. sure everything else fits accordingly. I'd say it's coming along nicely so far. Later. 
things. We'll cover the bases of the horns to hide the seams. Awesome. All right, time to start working on the dreadlocks. So I've got these really long ones right here and I'm trying to figure out, I know that if I put them toward the center, they'll hang down, but I kind of want them to hang down the back. So I said I'm going to start pinning some of these just to kind of get an idea of what's going on. I'm just poking them straight um, into the head itself. Sorry if you can't really see what's going on. Pushing some of these long ones in. I'll end up putting little dots where they're going to go. When I pull them out. So you can see how it's starting to hang down the back. Almost like a mohawk rat tail. Yep. I'm not going to put any long ones in the front because I don't want them to flop over my face. So yeah, that's that's pretty stellar. This is kind of this is exactly the look that I'm looking for. Here. So I'm pinning them into the nylon. And I'll just keep working from the outside in, and it'll get more and more full. Let's see here. Let's just get the long ones pinned in to start. I planned on braiding my own hair into sections when I wear this as well. Very cool. Way. 
I've got to start making dinner. Um, Stitch is hungry. I'm hungry. Um, and it's past 7 o'clock, so it's dinner time. I want to say, oh, thank you for the kisses. We want to say thank you for watching our stream. He's usually always sleeping in the hammock in the back. Um, we will be on again tomorrow at noon. So if you want to see uh, more, I'm probably still going to be stitching these dreadlocks. I'm going to try to stitch them tonight while I'm making dinner, but uh, we'll be stitching more dreadlocks in tomorrow at noon. Uh, depending on how things go, I might even start the stream before noon. Check my Instagram. I will post an update there of when the stream will start, but we're looking at around noon. Uh, so the game plan for tomorrow is to finish any dreadlocks that I can't get stitched tonight in the dark, um, and then working on putting the final and the fun stuff onto the headdress. So it's going to be adhering the skull, the jawbone, the fabric pieces to really make it wasteland, and we're going to do some weathering. So tomorrow should be a fun and very long stream. <laughs> so today we almost made it to four hours. Let's see if we can surpass four hours tomorrow. So I want to say thank you to all the viewers that stopped by my uh, channel today, uh, whether it be in the morning or this evening. I greatly appreciate your company, very much so. If you want to check out any of my other work or more progress pictures from this project, you can view it on my social media pages. Instagram is going to be your best one. If you are interested in getting your own wasteland headdress or possibly commissioning me for an oil painting or costume of your own, you can hit me up on any of those social medias or uh, my email, disfusionalstudios at gmail.com. You can check out more of my stuff at disfusional.com. Um, and uh, till tomorrow. Bye.